So questions would be, what small things are you doing when you are at the next point up? You can change the question to something that's more palatable to your teens. Huh? What small things can you be doing to be at five? Small. Five more minutes. Okay. I think I'm about done. Okay. And then, aha, uh -huh, the next question. You know, huh? what else do you need to be do doing to be at five? Small things. Focus on small things. Why small? Because small things are achievable. Okay? So, when this is over, you let things be. You never prescribe uh, what your child ought to be doing. We don't tell children what to do in, in the SF approach. We let a child conclude what he needs to be doing with his own ideas, with his own resources. So, a week later, when the event is over, what would be a good question to ask? In the SF uh, approach, we always ask the question, So, what has been better since the last time we talked about this? You get the question? It's very, very disciplined to focus on what went well. What's been better since the last time we talked about this? And then your child will say, oh, no, no, you know what? I really passed my exam. Okay, so what's my next question? Come on. Before the what else? How did you do it? <laughs> you compliment first and then you ask, how did you do it? And after that, you ask, what else, what else, what else? You get a drift? You are all expert already in just one hour. Okay, uh, okay. This workshop is uh, is is part of this uh, parent as coach workshop, six hour workshop that I developed and power more, worry less. Uh, I've done this since end of last year and it's been quite popular. I've not even promoted it. It's just friends who recommend here and there. Uh, one of the best compliments I had for this workshop is highly interactive. Uh, one lady from uh, from RGS, she said that she paid six hundred dollars to attend a parenting program. And she felt like this was better. She paid zero for this because SFE paid for her. Okay, so uh, if 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 you belong to some school, they want to they want this cost conducted. I'll be glad to, to do that for you. Okay, so parent is coach. The sibling says that a failure is a failure. So what should I do? Yeah, sibling rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Uh, if you are aware that there's this rivalry going on, so maybe the compliment can be done separately to this child. And then when your, your, this other child done well, do the same. Uh, do the same. Uh, it, it could be a reaction out of the fact that a lot of compliments is, 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 is done for the other child, not this child. If you are fair to both and compliment them just as well, then eventually that becomes a, a natural uh, a habit in the, in the family. So start by not complimenting right in front of the other child first. And then find occasion to compliment the other child. There, there are lots of things you can compliment the child for. I, I just want to add to that, and I was just sharing this with Edwin. I attended a course yesterday, and uh, the trainer said, there are no losers. They're just winners and learners. Isn't that such a beautiful thought? That was, that's by Tony Robbins. Anthony Robbins said that. I think we need, to, we need to start going to that mindset, because when you fail, you are actually learning to get better. So, there are no failures, just winners and learners. Oh, sorry. My name is Felissa, Felissa. and I really would like to actually attend this parent uh, coach, uh, your workshop that you're conducting. Can I get more information with regards to that? So, if you can email me, and if your school has got school family education, you can book through them. Right. Uh, so, what about if I do come from a school or, or an organization, but I am representing myself? Okay. Uh, <coughs> I don't know how to do this. The school will not admit others. Right. Maybe uh, it's time for me to conduct maybe, something for um, public. Um, just for schools? At the moment. At the moment. private schools? Uh, yeah, if, if they invite, I'll be right there. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, you really is an awesome speaker. I think Thank we should you. give it a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, you are learning fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing that, that keeps me going on this is that I, I really believe that, that parents play such an important role, that you are such an important mentor to your teenager, that if we start to feel positive about this role, we will be better parents to our children as well. We need to model to our teens that uh, they are not troublesome. Okay? Uh, it's just a stage in life. Don't blame them for the differences that exist between parents and teens. It, it exists throughout the centuries. Not just now. 
Okay. The more we can navigate this period of time, the, be the, the better that we navigate, the better it is for us. Uh. How do you get students who have mixed with a bad company, how do you get them back onto the right track? Yeah, this is uh, not so much a coaching question, uh, but in general, uh, every parent of teens is very suspicious of the child's friends. Uh, everyone. Uh, the first question we ask, who did you study with? Who did you go out with? And I would encourage parents to actually invite, uh, tell your child to invite your friends to, to your home. Then you can take a look at them. And most of the time when you start to see them, you realize they're not so bad after all, okay? They're great people. And teenagers like you to accept their friends. Uh, the more you accept them, it's like telling your teenager, I'm accepting you as well. Now, but there are occasions where uh, teenagers do meet with wrong companies, huh? Uh, and then you literally could snatch them. Now, coaching is just one, one role you play with your children. Parents play many roles. Uh, sometimes you just got to snatch them from danger. Uh, typically, what happens is that when teenagers do not experience uh, the love and warmth and acceptance at home, they will find love and warmth somewhere else. Okay? So the first place to begin is provide, provide the love and acceptance that the child needed at home first. They are less likely to find elsewhere. <laughs> Less likely. But when they do, sometimes in spite of what you've done, your child can be exposed to uh, 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 not so desirable elements. You, you will have to rescue your child from that. You literally will snatch them from, from, from that. But start, start by providing that love and, and acceptance at home. Next, take a look at their friends and feel more comfortable with them instead of judging the friends right away. Yeah. I think to add to that very quickly, always work with the schools. Schools have got school counsellors, work with teachers. I think if you are a parent of a troubled teen, uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. There are a lot of good resources and a lot of good people. Always start with the school because they've got the school counsellors and they can always explore alternatives. How can we coach a, a sort of a, a child with a bit of a negative confidence? Because for example, if you ask leading question, uh, oh, you did well this time round, say, yeah, not good enough. Then sometimes I say, oh, but you did pretty well. I say, yeah, my, all my friends are getting A, I'm only getting B. So <coughs> any of the leading questions that you ask, that uh, to move them, say that you actually have done better than last time, they always come back with a negative okay. answer. So how do we coach such a child? You, you pretty much describe most of us. Okay. <laughs> uh, most of us are that way. Uh, we are not good in accepting compliments. Now, uh, what your child says is one thing, but what your child internalizes is another thing. Okay. The more, the more you, you put forth the positive in your child, over time, some shaping began. Uh, I would just continue to compliment your child for every small thing that is done well. Uh, if a child already has low confidence and then you have a parent who keep on criticizing that child again, it's even worse. So my job is to balance it some. And the way I balance is to find many occasions for, for what the child has done right and just keep on complimenting. Um, you, you'll be amazed what a child internalized. Uh, we always felt like teenagers don't learn anything, huh? you know, because you know, one year in, one year out. Okay? Many things you taught from childhood when you were young, they already internalized it. They may challenge some of the base, basic uh, uh, stuff that they learn, but still it is, it is in them. They remember for a long time. Okay? I, I know for a fact, everyone, everybody loves, needs to be affirmed. It's the task of parents to affirm their children. This is how you build uh, confident children. The question is, how do we coach a teenager to manage their time? In counselling, uh, one of the things we do is to look for ex exceptions. Uh, there's lot, a lot to learn from ex exceptions. Most of our focus has always been, you know, what happens day to day and we focus on what went wrong. Eh? Now, five days, uh, you may have done things quote unquote wrong, but on Saturday you might, may have done things right. My interest as a therapist or coach is to find out what went well that day. Depressed people are not depressed every day. You get it? There are some days where they are less depressive and seems to function better. My energy in counselling is focused on the day when he was not depressive. Then I will find out what went well that day. What did you do? What's going on? What were you thinking? What were you doing? The more I ask those kind of questions, the child will finally get an idea. Oh, yeah. 
not every time I did wrong. Sometimes I do right. When I do this, I tend to get better results. So to answer your question, uh, help the child find the exception. Maybe you, you are the ones who single out the exception to your child. And that exception becomes a tremendous uh, coach or moment, coaching moment for your, for your teenager. How do we get a child to do something naturally without being told over and over again and then the child doesn't end up doing and then there's a conflict and confrontation? Okay. This is almost a daily occurrence in most families. <laughs> you are not alone. Okay? Teenagers have a DNA in them at that period of time. Huh? Whatever my parents say, say no. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> uh, if you can make a joke out of this, I think you will survive better. Uh, also, uh, part of the SF coaching approach is that we write on the energy that's going on in the children. Uh, we, we tend to push a lot. Pushing is very tiring. Very tiring. But there is a pull as well, the attraction. I need to find out where my, my child energy is leaning. Instead of focusing even at home what he has not done, I want to focus on what he has done well. The more we encourage and support and, and, and affirm things that he has done well, he's got more energy to do the rest. Uh, it always works when we focus on what already went well in the child. So, very normal for the teenager to say, no, I'm going to experience that myself. Okay? Uh, in fact, I've, I've, some things I just have decided I'm not going to make this an issue anymore. For example, my boys are neater than my girls. Can you believe that? I don't know if it's true of yours. No, my boys pack the room nicely. My girls don't take care of the room, okay? Uh, for some years, I've been fighting over my first teenager, uh, my eldest daughter, over the bedroom thing. Until I finally decided, forget it, okay? You know, we all learn different things at different stages in life. If they don't learn it right now, next time when she gets married, the husband will, 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 <laughs> will have a hard time with her, <laughs> okay? <laughs> she will learn it somehow. I know. They, they, somehow in life's journey, they will learn. We don't learn everything at one go in life. So just one step at a time. Very good question. Nice. <laughs> I am right now talking to uh, 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 the fathers. Uh, what do you call it? Fathers at work. Uh, fathers network. Uh, I'm trying to write a book called Fathers as Coach. I'm going to call it fathers because uh, if I write parent as coach, nobody pay attention. No? So many parenting books out there. If I write a book on fathering, the wives will buy it for the husband. <laughs> <laughs> so all my thinking about raising teenager and this coaching approach will be in that book. I, I hope to, to get done by the end of the year. For me, the takeaway today is three things. The first is the fact that if you put small steps, you are actually putting them into action. We always want kids to come back with 80 marks. They get 30. You ask them how to get 31. You know, we, we need to teach kids that we often forget that in order to teach children, we need to put that small steps into action. And you need to be realistic. Realistic because if your child cannot perform then manage that expectation. Eventually, he or she will get there. Thirdly, belief. When you go with that mindset, when you're going to talk to your son or your daughter and you have that mindset, oh, she's going to say no. Believe that she is going to say yes. Believe in yourself. Very important. We need to believe in our children. I think it's a very important concept. Whenever you look at a teenager, your first mindset is, oh, what is he up to? We must always try and believe the good in them. Try and look for that. Uh, thank you very much. With that, I would like to thank Edwin for a wonderful workshop. And on behalf of the MOE Excel Fest Committee, we would like to present a token of appreciation to you. Okay, so thank you for being an awesome audience.